Let's talk anime. Hello and welcome to Brandon's Discuss Anime, a Reactless Amoeba podcast. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're starting this all wrong. You're starting this all wrong. How? Right? We got to get in here and be like, yo, Chooms, what's going on? You ready to go Nova today? I am your host, Brandon Horvath, and with me was my co-host, Brandon Fallinger, who started the episode way too early. I am ready to go, Nova. I don't know about you, it's gonna be sweet. Um, this is season 11, and we're switching things up a little bit differently this season. Um, yeah, yeah. little personal issues, Orion's night might not be here for most of these. Yeah, although I might have his thoughts on what the title is, and I will maybe insert it during mm. the normal spot, but he might only be on one or two this time around, but we have some guests coming down the line. They ain't here today, but they'll be here eventually. Yes, yes. So, um... Telling you, man, those chooms. <laughs> and although it's been quite some time since we recorded the season 10 finale, which was Mop Psycho season 3, and even though I probably will drop that after I finish recording this... <laughs> I don't know why I've been so far behind on dropping episodes. Maybe it was because Boku no Hero was on, and then I was spent, like, the day or two editing those, and then all my other mm-hmm. work got pushed back. But, yeah, this is a slightly old news at this point, since it's about month, two months old. Did you hear famous anime, manga artist, and creator of several popular characters died recently. I mean, you're not giving me a lot of hints as to who this (laughs) might be. Leji Matsumoto. Don't know that name. Creator of Harlock. See, we watched Harlock. I barely, like, remember it outside of it being fucking weird. Mm -hmm. Um, And not making a lot of sense. Queen Esmeraldas. Star nope. Blazers. Nope. Um, I think I've heard of the title of that one. Battleship Yamamoto, I think. I know I've heard of that one and seen like clips. I think Star Blazers may have been an English title for one of them, but like all of his works that sometimes cross over with each other and stuff. Um. Yeah, he died. Last February at 85. Oof. Rip. Mm-hmm. But, hey, like, I've only seen Harlock, and I wanted to watch another one of his series. At this point, I forget what it was, but although I found Harlock weird like you did, but maybe because there wasn't heavy action and how it was more of a, like, story-based thing set in space when I instantly think, okay, space, action. But this had, like, almost no action and was, like, a very story-based story. Mm -hmm. Very character-based and stuff. So I'm not too sure if that's how all his works are, or if, like, Starship Yamato, which I'm looking at the proper title now, if that is action-y at all, or if that's, like, interpersonal drama type stuff. I uh, don't know. Like, I'm sure there's at least some of each of it, but I don't know for sure. <laughs> I've only seen, like, very... I've seen a couple of clips... It's been a long while since I've seen them, but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to tell you what the main premise or anything is. Like, is it a Star Trek kind of thing? I don't know. Could be. If I was going to guess, I'd say it's something closer to that than, say, Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Although I did hear he made a Harlock in the Old West, which 
I heard it had an anime adaption too, but that would be kind of weird. Maybe. I mean, you know, it, Harlock was a bounty hunter, right, if I remember correctly? Kind of. If I remember correctly. Um, then the same kind of theme and setup would work in the Old West, because that's the kind of shit they're all about. Yeah, yeah, so maybe a little bit more action in the Old West. You know, maybe maybe he decided to be like, hmm, I like this, uh, this Bebop thing, but what if I make it actual cowboys? Hmm... There was something else I wanted to bring up, but unfortunately, I did not write it down, and thus we <laughs> can't. <laughs> uh, oh. All right. Well, I've got something you might enjoy. Yes, sir. So, we've had a fridge problem recently. Uh, and by fridge problem, yeah, I knew, I knew I was going to get a reaction out of you when I said that. <laughs> so, when I say we've had a problem, I mean it's been going on for, uh, I'm going to say about two months now. What? Um, maybe, maybe, maybe longer, maybe since January. Um. Is there a tsunami of water whenever you open the door? <laughs> okay, so, d- funny story, all right? <laughs> Not quite a tsunami of water, however, maybe a glacier. <laughs> so that that problem actually started a long ass time ago, like uh, at least a year, maybe further back. Where I don't know exactly where it's leaking from off the top of my head, but okay. water had been leaking out of the fridge and freezing underneath the deli drawer in there, right? Okay. So every so often we'd have to pull out the deli drawer and go in with like a spatula or some some shit and peel the ice out of there. And it'd be like close to an inch thick. I think you were telling me about this part of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yes, that, that specifically has been going on for a while. Did it get worse? It got worse. (laughs) I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, I guess, I don't know if it started leaking from somewhere else, but either way, it started leaking down, like, the back, the inside of the fridge, but down the back end, right? Okay. And becoming just, like, a section of ice. You could see it, like, coming out and kind of starting to pop the seams where the plastic comes together. Oh, no. And we're like, huh, well, this doesn't look good. And the reason we realized it is because we're like, the freezer isn't getting cold. What's going on? So at one point, we uh, emptied out our fridge and freezer because we're like, shit's not getting like, cold enough. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know, a couple, uh, like a day or two later, it's like, okay, it's getting cold again. I guess we can put everything back. So, you know, we did. It worked good for a while. We didn't have a problem. Until, like... Two weeks ago. And and in this meantime, we had been shopping for new fridges. Okay. So, we uh, we get to the point of, like, we need to get a new fridge. We're looking at fridges. And, of course, one of the ones they decided to look at was an LG. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh. That's the brand that, like, shoots out a fucking cascade of cold water when it doesn't work. <laughs> Oh no! You're be in the same boat almost. Oh no! Luckily, of course, why listen to me? But somebody else told them, "Don't get LGs; they're not good." So they're like, "Okay, well, I don't know. Now we're gonna look again." And that was like uh, at this point two weeks ago. Uh-huh. Um. So last week they finally went out and bought one. They got a GE, so a General Electric. We got it in. Actual delivery went well. Didn't have any problems from the sound of it. I wasn't here for it, but it sounds like it went really well. Okay. Except as they were putting it in, my dad noticed a few things. Noticed there was like, uh, like you almost couldn't see this one, but there's like a hairline kind of scratch on the front of the freezer door of this thing. And a like dimpled portion at the very top corner of the fridge. This is Bob's fridge like, all over again. 
Uh, not quite. Not yet, anyway. So it does look like that might have happened in the factory because the plastic piece that's above that isn't damaged at all. Okay. So that seems to be the case in that regard, right? However, we have a different problem. What? So this fridge has two doors that open up, right? Uh, you know, it opens up like French doors. Now, it's also got two outside drawers. One that's a freezer, and one that I think you can set to be either another freezer or another, uh, like, deli kind of drawer. So, each of those has a light for it. So, that way, when you open it up, you can see what the fuck you're doing. Mm-hmm. So, the freezer door's light doesn't turn off. Doesn't turn off. Yes. So, it almost, like, the way because of the way it is... Looks like a night light at this point because it refuses to turn off, and the guys that were here installing it couldn't figure out why. <laughs> okay, okay. So now we're like, okay, if they knock some cash off for like the scratches and stuff, great, but we have this light that doesn't turn off. What do we do? <laughs> mm. So at least at this point, we have not filled the fridge with anything. We're going to report it to, uh, I think we got it from Home Depot. Uh, we're going to report it to them and see what they can tell us or if we need to just get a fucking replacement. Hmm. So yes, I did not have the catastrophic problem that Bob did in fact have, but I had my own issues. <laughs> Bob from the Distractables podcast, in case you don't get the reference where you're referencing. I mean, I feel like it's the most famous fridge on the internet. <laughs> probably. Probably. No, 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 no. Ooh, is he Korean? The guy who, like, walks by a few fridges and says, I love refrigerators. Uh... You, oh, like... Okay, you... That's a meme you might not be aware of. Okay. It is one I don't know. So yes, that has been uh, this this lovely day in my uh, my appliance life. Huh. Interesting. Well. Uh, oh, uh, one other thing. Yes. Uh, I'll I'll bring this up quick. It, it's short. It won't be. It won't take okay. much time. I did see something pop up, and I only noticed it because I'm subscribed to Nintendo on uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how long this has been out on Steam, but I did see it on Steam earlier today. New game came out. It's called Dredge. Looks really interesting, where you get to play like an old fishing trawler, picking up stuff, upgrading your boat, etc., etc. Except there's some Cthulhu shit going on in there. Oh! And I'm super interested in what the fuck this has. Interesting. I'm like, oh. Oh, we're going Cthulhu. I like myself a Cthulhu. Let's get some Cthulhu. So yeah, I'm I'm debating on whether or not I want to pick that up or not on either Steam or the Switch. Mm. I'm super interested. I'm uh, I'm excited. Oh, also update on Digimon Survive. Uh, still pushing through that. I've mostly taken a break to like deal with some side shit. Other than that, and by side shit, I mean like I can take out these like what are they called Mugen collection quests where you, like, take out uh, stronger monsters in order to get better, uh, like, training materials for the Digimon. Okay. So, like, oh, let's just go through these, because apparently you can go through it, I think it's, like, 1 to 15 or 1 to 20, I forget which one, uh, and then it'll cycle back around. So, like, all right, let's just clear these all of these once, and then after that, I can just finish off the last bit of this quest. Mm. Like, last bit of this route and be done with the game. Okay. Today's anime we're covering is Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Who doing it, man? <laughs> and I may cut this part out if things don't go, but let's cut to Ryan to see what this anime is about. I thought we did this one. We did not. Okay. Yeah, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. That's like 
takes place Cyberpunk 2077 universe, I'm assuming. About a year before the game. Okay, a year before the game, and... Uh, so, 76, I guess? I kind of know about a little bit. Only, like, that, um... There's, like, hackers or something. They're using, like, their phones or something like that to get into people's, uh... Like, the their brains or whatever. Their updates in their heads, you know, they have, like, the chips that they get. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But, uh, I guess it's, like, it follows, like, uh, this is my guess, because I actually don't know what it is exactly. But I'm assuming it just, like, follows, uh, hackers trying to gain access to something or, uh, being paid to steal stuff. Okay... And, uh, yeah, that's honestly what, uh, what I assume that is. The Edge Runners, they're like, yeah, they're like the tech, techno, technology people that are into doing that kind of stuff. They're the techno weebs. I'm slightly surprised that you were, like, so big into cyberpunk, like, last year, two years ago, that you haven't even, like, checked this out. Yeah, I think I watched, like, maybe the first episode. Hmm. But, yeah, I think the first episode, they're, like, on the subway or something. I remember right. That's all I actually remember. And then, like, tracking somebody or something, or putting some kind of tracking chip or some whatever. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Orion, for your lovely input. I'm sure it was both hilarious and amazing. Yes, I really enjoy this. This was it's, fun. It gets really good, and then it gets really sad. I'm not too sure if I should share my thought now or wait. <sighs> Screw it. Like, big spoiler, I was expecting everybody to die. So, here's the thing, right? I, I mentioned this to you earlier, that I got spoiled on something, and that was the fact that David would die. Mm. Um, when I was looking up his voice actor on the wiki, I accidentally saw the portion that said, like, status deceased. And I'm like, oh! I mean, it kind of implied that with the intro, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, cool, now it's cemented in my brain that he's gonna die. <laughs> well, I wonder if we would... Ryan might know this since he played through Cyberpunk, at least a majority of it from what I remember him talking about. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he will be able to go, oh yeah, this is a reference to this in the game, this is a reference to this. I don't think so, because they're two different writers. I'm sure there's, like, references as far as, like, for instance, the Arasaka Company and shit. Like, that's probably in there. I know... Because I was looking a little bit about it, and you can get David's jacket in the game. They probably added that as, like, an extra bonus, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, yeah, may maybe? To, to probably promote the anime. Maybe, because I'm not too sure if edge runners are a thing in the it game. It might be a term, yeah. Either that... Or, what they could do is, we're looking for a cyberpunk anime, let's look through the game's files and see if we could have, like, a backstory out of one of the items and something. I, I highly doubt that one. Okay. I'm, I'm more in the realm of the anime got developed... They got an idea of what it's going to look like, and they're like, cool, we're going to put this jacket in the game. Mm-mm, okay, okay. That is generally the way that shit goes, especially because Cyberpunk was out way before the anime was. Okay, okay, fair and enough. It was at least a year difference. And did you know that, and I didn't know this, but there was a quote-unquote prequel to 2077 as a pen and paper RPG? I mean, that's, I think, where the cyberpunk setting of Night City came to be. 
mm-hmm. was out of that. I think it was like Cyberpunk 2016 or something. Mm-hmm. So question I have for you. Yes. How do you like the intro? Awesome. I love the song. I was a bit confused by the visuals at first until we hit the time skip. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, David Silhouette doesn't look right here. And then we saw the big buff version of him from like a year ahead. And we're like, I'm like, oh, now it clicks. Now I get it. Oh, by the way, who is best girl in this anime on three? One, two, three, Becca. Rebecca. Yep. Uh, hey, see, I knew it. I knew you'd agree with me. <laughs> uh, although she does get a little bit intense at some point and um, borderline. Oh, yeah, she's intense. She fucking dances on her hands. And borderline psychotic. But other I than. I mean, look at the city she's in. Are you shocked? I, I know, but other than that, she's adorable. The, literally the scene where she tries to get into the bar and the three fucking bouncers are like, nah, girl, you too, you too small. You're too young for this. And David just is like, zoop, zoop. <laughs> hey, hey, let me in hey, too. Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Oh. Oh, man. No, Um, my next question is, uh, does... David remind you of someone from another trigger thing. I'm trying to run by all the trigger. Are we including Gynax in this since Gynax was I mean Trigger you was um You can if you want. I am blanking. Who did he, who did he remind you of? The main character from Promare. Oh, you did mention Promare. Yeah. Between the jacket and the hairstyle, it reminds me a lot of Promare. He's got the design shaved into the side of his head, but like other than that, if that hair was blue and his skin was more white, I would have been like, that's just Pro that's the Promare man. I can't remember his name, but that's the Promare man. Hmm. Interesting. I think his hair might be a little bit shorter on the top, but not by much. But yes, it's it, it literally just reminded me immediately of Promare. Yeah. But yeah, so, interestingly enough, David, like, within the first episode, suddenly has the world. The world, though! He's just... <laughs> I mean, it's not exact, right? Like It's like super, super speed. Yeah, it's like his body and processing power of his brain has like jacked up a thousandfold or something. In the way that you're talking, if we had like the Flash's perspective, I guess, except I'm not sure how fast the Flash's like brain processes things as far as like considering what to do, maybe that'd be what we'd be seeing here. People are still moving at a very, very slow rate, tiny incrementally slow, while David's like zipping around like nothing matters. So it's basically the world, though. For all intents and purposes, it may as well be. And even by the end, we have a star platinum that takes him down. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) And I did see Adam Smasher is a villain in 2077. Well, hey, there you go. They might have that one. They might have borrowed the idea of. Might have been like, hey, we like this character in it, but everything else, you know, do what you want uh, with the setting and everything. And I think it's like the Arasaka Corp. I saw yeah. was also a thing in twenty seventy seven. Okay, so yeah, that's still a thing. That's just part of the setting. Yeah. So this is a side story, so they can't mess with the timeline of. Well, here's the other thing. There are multiple ways to end that game. So, like, them getting involved directly with whatever the fuck is going on in the game, they kind of can't do because they can't predict the game outcome. Right, right. They, they would have to cement an ending as canon. I don't know that the uh, developers, um, right, CD Projekt Red, yeah. I don't know that they'd want a canon outcome at this point. Or, or 
if this is a prequel slash side story because the first six episodes takes place in 2076. Mm -hmm. And then it takes place in 2077 for the last four. So I'm not sure when the game takes place, if this takes place alongside some of the events of the game, like Adam is at a meeting or something like that, and then they wrote it in that, oh yes, this was the meeting they were alluding to in mm. the game. Yeah, like it could be an open-ended thing that they borrowed to like connect the two. I could buy that. So, yeah, David is a, a good old boy whose mama dies in a car crash, who, in my mind, especially knowing how the setting like this sets up, is fucking crazy to think that that shit's going to happen. Oh, man, my boy's going to be a corpo on the top floor. He's going to be great. And I'm just sitting here like, lady, that ain't happening. <laughs> no one from the bottom is getting up there. Corporations, in this case, may as well be fucking royalty. You're not getting it. A gang-related car crash. Actually, I would have been curious to know what gangs those were. Maybe if you play Cyberpunk, you'll know? We wouldn't know, because they're just generic. We never get a name for who they were. Like, unless it's in the credits and I didn't know about it. Or in the make. game. Yeah, but the game wouldn't have any connection as far as, like, what they did. You no, know, but I mean, like, if they had any sort of logo on their car... They didn't, from what I hmm. remember seeing. There oh. was no, no no identifier. Maybe I'm wrong there. I, there might be, but I don't remember seeing one. It, hmm. it was just a generic vehicle. Okay. I thought that there would be some identifier for people who played the game. Is like, oh yeah, this is one gang and the other gang. There could be, but like I said, it seems like, like for instance, in the end, when they, uh, what is it, Faraday brings in that decoy party, right? Mm -hmm. There's no moniker on them at all. Ah, uh, okay. The only time we get one that's outside of, like, the Edge Runners, which only appears when David, you know, takes over, mm -hmm. is um, the Japanese one. Mm. And they're dressed with, like, the, the Oni masks and shit. Like, it's hard to mistake them for another one, for any other gang. Ah, uh, okay. And we only ever see two of them. That's it. We don't see any others. So David is starting to use the world, though. Yeah, he's 16. He, uh, he, he gets into a fight with another student who's a prick. And beats the living shit out of him. And apparently David's actually a straight A student. That was more the, the surprising part to me. Yeah. He's a straight A student, even if he can't get the money together for the tech he needs to go. Yeah. Which, you know, you think it's a school, they would supply that, but no, of course not. Why would they? Also, uh, <laughs> how did you like that first spontaneous just uh, sex scene that we get to? That was entirely out of nowhere, and I'm like, good thing you warned me to wear headphones. A, a completely random point where we cut to um the guy that, like, David goes to to get new cyberware and, like, upgrades and shit is just going to town on his own time, being like, yep, yeah, this is what I do with my life when I'm not working. <laughs> we get that twice out of him. Episode one and episode two. Yeah, I couldn't remember if it was two or three, but yeah, that we get that twice of just that v uh, a VR kind of situation. And he's got the fucking, like auto flashlight on his dick. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, okay. Oh hey, if you didn't already know, this is probably not for young people. Uh yeah, I should have <laughs> added a 15 plus to this. <laughs> but yeah, he uh he gets a Zoworldo implant that kind of like runs up and down his spine and it's called the Sand Devastan. Mm -hmm. Or the Sandy for short. And I'm gonna be real it's fucking sweet looking, but apparently Doc doesn't give you any kind of, like, anesthetic before he starts jamming this shit into you. Or do you think if David would have had money, like, okay, here's, like, a bunch of money, give me some anesthetic or anything. 
I mean, I would buy that when the Sandy gets installed, but when he starts getting like that montage of more chrome mm. added in, he's still like in the same position, right? Okay. Like biting down on the bar, clearly he's feeling it. Mm-mm. I would argue that uh yeah, Doc strictly runs a no uh <laughs> no anesthetic clinic for this shit. Oh, I can only imagine how painful that was to have that shit grafted to his spine, if not outright replacing it. Yeah. So yeah, he starts running around, he beats up the kid, and we're all like cheering, yeah, he beat the asshole, who I thought for sure would have come back before the end. Yeah. Like, there's a point where they do actually get to his dad, and his dad gets killed. I figured he'd show up as the next target or something. Mm. Or like, he would be involved at the end with taking out people on the squad. Mm-hmm. didn't happen kind of surprised thought and, for sure we'd see him a second time and then we meet lucy yep who brings david in to meet the second best character in the game main because hmm. apparently this sandy that he got uh was supposed to go to main mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i forget how did he get the sandy in the first place Oh, that's right. His mom, his mom, the way his mom was making money was like stealing tech and shit and selling it off to people. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if she was contracted with Maine's gang or if she was always a part of it. Well, you missed the part where Lucy and David were robbing people of little neck chips. Well, we I was trying to jump back to when uh, okay. he first gets fi- like finds the sandy mm-hmm. in his mom's coat. Okay. And gets it installed. Yeah, he finds it in his mom's coat, which is like I would like to know a little more background on how the hell his mom was involved personally. Um like I said, was she getting a contract with them to lift, you know, these uh these things and like sell it off? Because his mom is an EMT. Yes. So, uh, she could somehow maybe illegally get this chrome from victims? Probably illegally. Either way, she dies in a car accident. David's shit out of luck with money at this point because they were already poor to begin with and now all he can really do is try and sell that piece of equipment, which he couldn't do. Because nobody, the only person he knew was Doc, and Doc wasn't going to give him the cash he wanted for it. So he had it installed instead, under the condition that if he fucking loses it, Doc gets it for free. Turns out, David's pretty good at handling some of this shit. So yeah, he handles the, the San Devastan just fine. Apparently his body is able to handle a bit more cyberware than the normal person. And what are the... I'm calling them neck chips that he steals with Lucy. So the question would be what data is on it. Oh, uh, okay. I, I'm assuming it's they're like memory cards of some sort to a certain degree. Mm. Or like maybe it's where they keep their cash. Okay. Like the digital cash, essentially. They're pickpocketing for less for anything else, you know. Okay, but just like on the neck, I know this is the cyberpunk world and pockets maybe don't even exist but the neck would seem like a weird place to keep your cash well i mean we've seen them plug in through those things too right like uh yeah. Lucy, for example plug gets plugged in via that thing not just with chips mm-hmm. but, like through a cable so i guess in future world your neck is important mm-hmm. so yeah main big old guy Loves his cyber tech. Pretty fucking cool. Hold on, let me see something. Let me see. I'm curious. Who is his voice actor? Since we listened to the English dub this time. Yes, I actually did, because it was pretty fucking good. William Christopher Stevens. He does Jesus. not have a Wikipedia link. He does have an IMDB. Oh, Matthew Mercer was Falco. I... Yeah, that one, that one I knew. I could tell by the voice. It's very similar to other cowboys he's played. Let's see here. Oh, he was in Saints Row. Let's see. What else do we got here? Super Crooks. Shimnagami Sensei 5. Oh, he was Shiva in that. Okay. 
Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Because his voice is oh, okay. He's a few voices in Vinland Saga. Mm. Anything else? He's got a few credits in World of Warcraft, Horizon Zero Dawn, and its DLC. Mm, some of the new Walking Dead series, Mom City, Avengers. I figured there'd be more here where. It, I had heard him because his voice sounds very familiar, but no, guess not. And maybe why I recognize the name Matthew Mercer, he is heavily tied to Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Mm. He is Jojo. Oh, there you go. In all incarnations. So let me point this out, right? I feel like Mercer has more or less the same voice on a lot of these, like, tough guys in the case of, like, Falco and, um... Oh, I don't even remember what his name is now in Overwatch because the asshole got that got kicked from the company had his name on that character, so they had to change it when they kicked him from the company. Um, Cole Cassidy. Yeah, that's the new name. Um, He kind of has the same cowboy voice one way or the other. Like, mm. if there's any difference, it's very, very, like, minimal. And I feel like Jotaro, from what clips I have heard of him, is just the same, but without the accent. Like, that's not to say that Mercer isn't good at being a voice actor. I'm just saying that those, like, sound the same to me. Anyway. Uh, maybe I... Main, who's like a bulked out cool black boy. And just hold on. Um, maybe I wasn't paying full enough attention to Falco, but I did not hear Jotaro in his voice. Like I said, minus the uh, the accent. I don't know if you're able to like envision what that sounds like. I would need to go back and listen to Falco again. Because mm-hmm. Falco doesn't talk a lot until like the last few episodes. Yeah, yeah. We meet Maine, who's literally pissed off that David has stolen his gear. <laughs> and not yes. only that, installed it. And is holding him like, upside down at one point? Oh yeah, like a fucking school bully trying to shake out the money. <laughs> <laughs> poor little kid. Why isn't this tech coming off you? Um, Maine, it's installed Drop it out on your me. pockets. Maine, it's installed on me. Well, shit, I'm not getting it off of you now. I can just kill you and rip it off. Please don't, sir. <laughs> What's to stop me? What if I work for you? I'll work Sorry. it off. Cyberpunk and Renders as a PG-13 series. <laughs> <laughs> Doc would very much be not pleased about that. There'll be far less blood. Far, far less, less blood. Far less nudity, too. Yeah. We'd have all the smoke hiding all the, all the fancy bits. <laughs> I did notice in one of the shots, Lucy does not have an ass. It's due Did she on... uninstall it? <laughs> uh, maybe because she did well, not... From the when she's angle... in like, the cyber world, it seems like they, they're Barbie dolls in there, essentially. Oh, maybe that's what I was looking at from that angle. Yeah, like even when she's in there and we see like other go- like another guy in there, it mm-hmm. seems like he's a Ken doll. Like they, oh. they don't have any dangly bits. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, they definitely do. Inside of the cyber world... Not so much. Or cyberspace, I should say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anyway. Maine is like, fuck it, we'll take a chance. What The minute you, like, die out, I'm getting that thing anyway. But yeah, after, you know, Lucy has this whole, like, oh, man, you're great. I love you. Let me show you a thing. Oh, it's great. Maine, kill him. Just take his shit. So anyway, we get to meet the crew. The, or at least, you know, the main crew. Which mm-hmm. is Maine. Dorio. Who remi- Does Dorio remind you of someone? No. She doesn't remind me of anyone specifically, but her build, right? The the body build she has reminds me of fucking uh, Doro Hey Doro. Oh! One of those ca- like, a character from that. Oh, okay. No, is it Dororo? No, it's Doro Hey Doro. Yeah, you're right. It's Doro Hidoro. Yep. Okay. I couldn't remember. But yeah, it reminds me of like the blonde chick from that. And like the way that her body's built all muscular and shit. And mm-hmm. it looks a little bit awkward. 
because I'm like, I don't know, the head doesn't fit on there. But in, in her case, the head seems like it's the right size to match the body. But yeah, it, it reminds me of that kind of body build. We also meet Kiwi, who is like Lucy, who can jack into cyberspace. Uh, they call them Netrunners. And she's far more stoic. Far more stoic, wears a mask, which apparently is like, I don't know how she drinks or eats anything. Um, that m- quote unquote mask I looked is actually a cyber jaw. Again, I don't, I don't know I've how it works. I've never seen it open. Yes, yes. How does that cyber jaw operate? Like, she smokes through it somehow. Does it open like mandibles? I don't know. It's weird. And then she like, just puts food in it and it blends it for her? Is there a blender inside her mouth? Liquefies the food so she can drink it, because we've seen her like put a straw in there. Huh. Like through the little like vent grills. And we meet Pillar. Oh, was that the was that the name of the yes. I can't remember. Because I don't think I don't know if they ever say it more than once or twice. We always hear Rebecca call him bro. Yeah. And we yeah, mean... he's got he's got super long arms that eventually get to be turned gold. Yes. And we meet the best girl, Rebecca. Yes. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. Why did you kill her? Who holds a gun to David's head while having a friendly <laughs> conversation? <laughs> yeah, Vane gives him a test to, like, deliver a fucking package, and he shows up at apparently, like, uh, uh... Pillar's apartment. Yeah, Pillar and Rebecca's apartment. And Rebecca answers it, gun casually held to his head, like, Hey, yo, Chum, what's going on? What's going on, man? <laughs> Hey, is that a package for me? <laughs> Almost the entire time. Hey, yo, bro. Sounds like someone's got a package for you. You want it? Yeah, toss it here. Dill has the pistol against his head. And I just find it, like, not awkward, but they're siblings. Why is Lucy walking around in her underwear in front Lucy? of her... I mean, no, Becca. Why is Becca walking around in, front of her, in her underwear in front of her brother? I mean, you know, when they're the only family they have, I guess why not? I mean, at the same time, right? Let's say you're, uh, I don't know, like you've grown up that way your entire life. It's not that weird. Yeah, okay, I, okay. Especially considering you're in the cyberpunk world where fucking, like, shit doesn't matter. Fair point! Humanity's kind of, like, not where it normally would be for most people. Fair point indeed. I just saw that they have no plans for a second season. And granted, I know how this, with the way this season ended, how could you have a second season, but it could have been an anthology. It could have been. I would have loved to see more anthologies, but I don't think they want to push this series anymore until they make a new game or something. Oh, okay. For it. I would totally be down for more of this shit, because it's fucking great. Like, I don't think it quite reaches Arcane, but it is right there underneath it. Yeah, yeah. It is really fucking good. And even more so because it's fucking 2D. It's not CG other than, like, the vehicles sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes some of the inside the net thing has 3D looks to it to me at some points. I could see that sometimes. So yeah, we meet Rebecca, who is literally the best. Like, yes. I, I wish she didn't die at the end of this. I love her so much. Oh, hey, here we go. Perfect. Uh, I just saw this, so this does confirm it. So Rebecca wasn't initially part of the scripts that were written by, oh, by CD Projekt Red, but later created by Studio Trigger, who had to convince them with the character design. Really? So yeah, Trigger was like, you want this. Fucking put it in. Trust us. You want this bubbly little psychopath. Yes, you do. Because she's the best. Yes? I freaking love her. As much as I like the other characters, Rebecca is easily, by far and away, the best one. I should make a list of best girls and then piss off the internet with my opinion. <laughs> I think you'd be more worried about how many of those are Sundares. Becca isn't. 
Isn't she? I feel like at certain points she tries to play that card and it doesn't work. I know she does attempt to hit on David. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, she mentions it to Kiwi at some point, like she's played the hard to get kind of card and shit. So I'm like, oh, so she probably tried it over that like one year time skip. Oh, so she, yes, she probably tried the Sunuri card and is like, well, this doesn't work either. No, huh. that didn't work. What's the next shot? That's the one. Next one. Perky little yeah. sister card. Wait, I'm already a little sister. Uh, okay, let me try that one. Oh, that one didn't work. Here's the fun part. She's a little lolly, but she's 20 years old. I've met people that are like that short that get mistaken to be like younger than they should be. <laughs> like than they actually are. Like what? In college, I knew a girl who, um, who was like, what was he? She was 18 or 19, but she literally looked like she could have been 12. Really? Yes. It was kind of crazy. Not or to, at the very least, like very early teenage years. Not to that extreme, but I'm usually thought to be at least like eight years younger than I actually am. Mm -hmm. Which kind of sucked because one person was flirting with me until she found out my age and Oof. was like, yeah, she's like, oh. <laughs> There's someone else that has that same problem at one point. <laughs> oh. Uh, or something very similar, yet just as petty. Yeah, and we found out our age gap is a little bit more than we would have been comfortable with. So I know someone, right, who had this almost exact same situation where they were basically being... um. They were, like, talking to each other, and literally, between him and her, the reason she refused to date him was he was too short. Petty. Super petty. That, and she had, like, really, I want to say really specific things she wanted on this checklist of the guy she uh -huh. wanted in life. And I want to say my friend hit most of them. Height was not one, and apparently that was one of the ones that was, uh, uh, you need to be, otherwise no. Yeah, but, like, if she and I were closer in age, hey, like, I would have been fine with it, but we both felt, I mean, like, I didn't say anything, but I could indirectly feel that, oh, you're way too old, and, and I'm just like, uh, I would feel weird dating somebody that's 12 years younger than me. Mm -hmm. Because I, I thought she was a few years older than she was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, damn. But, uh, yeah, so things were going good right up until, I don't know, we find this guy pissing in a barrel from on top of, like, a crate. Yeah. And uh, Pillar decides to be a fucking asshole like he usually is. Turns out this guy is full on cyber psycho and just blasts his head off. Which is something that happens if you have too much chrome that starts affecting your psyche. Yeah, it starts frying your brain. Got too many implants, things you, your body can't handle it. You keep it in for too long and you just fry. How you say, how you like more disregarding humanity because you don't feel like you are one anymore. Well, and in other, like, as we've seen with some other characters coming up, they start seeing different shit. Like, they start having essentially like flashbacks and such. Hallucinations. Yep. Blackouts. Mm hmm. What is it Doc says at one point? It starts with like a nervous tick in like some unconscious movements in your cyberware. It starts with like nausea and shit. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that's a great one. Cause you get to see like, as he's telling uh it's shocker here, David, this at one point, he's getting more and more freaky looking with every line he says. Yeah. And would you say in episode one and two, like David's nosebleeds are a sign of that or just the fact that he has new power, quote-unquote new powers, that his body isn't used to yet, and the nosebleeds are because of that. 
I'm leaning toward that one because later on when he's using it, it's not as serious an issue. Okay. When he fr- we see that job when he is first taking over for like Bane's death when uh-huh. we catch up to them again, he do- uses it and he doesn't have any nosebleeds or anything. He's just fine. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking that it's because his body isn't used to using the sand devastan at that point. Mm. Yeah, and main goes cyber psycho. Uh, d- well, yeah, we get into this point of main starting to lose it. However, in the meantime, we have a whole bunch of other shit going on, including like, oh, we need to get this one thing from the guy that's uh, that David beat up his son. Him has a whole yes. bunch of info that we need to get out and get to the contracty the guy that's contracted as Faraday. Mm-hmm. Who has um, three eyes on the side of his head? Yeah, apparently. I wonder what... Does that make him see three times as well, or... See, I don't know. Let me see. We can look up his shit. Let's see here. What does he have? Oh, it doesn't say exactly what it is. It just says cyber optics. It's not specific about what it is. Unidentified cyber optic quirk. Yep, unknown. Couldn't tell you. Anyway, they're trying to get info, and it turns out that Kiwi can't do it because uh, Maine, while he's going cyber psycho, fucking punches out Kiwi. Breaks his cyber jaw. Did Literally disconnects it in the process. Mm. I'm curious how things would have gone down had he killed her there. Considering what she does in the future. Yeah. Uh, Because of this, Lucy decides to get involved, revealing the fact that she has, like, a massive, like, dive in the back. Under the conditions that Maine can't be in the room, and David's the one that watches the the guy. Over the course that we have been going, they have kind of built up a relationship with each other now. Yes. Uh, David and Lucy. Maine starts losing it. Uh, The guy starts waking up. uh, I'm blanking on his name completely right now, but he starts waking up, which starts messing up things for Lucy on the inside, where unbeknownst to anyone else until like the ending, we find out that what they are after was in fact in there and involved potentially using David as a test subject due to his ability to handle cyberware so she not only erases that but then claims that there was absolutely nothing inside and that he was bait hmm. anyway main's going cyber psycho dorio is trying to like pump him full of meds and as she manages to like give him the last med she can she gets shot in the back and dies and that just at this point pushes main over the edge so now he's like murdering everyone until he gets to the point where he's piled up a bunch of what I assume is bombs and lays Dorio on it like it's a giant funeral pyre, essentially. Mm-hmm. David runs back after getting Lucy to the escape vehicle and Maine not showing up. He runs back to save them, or at least to try and see what's going on. And like... In what I assume at this point would be his final moments before he suicides himself, Maine actually gives a somewhat, has like a somewhat moment of lucidity where he's talking to David. Like he recognizes David during this whole thing. I was like surprised he had that moment of clarity. Mm -hmm. Like he still is seeing things wrong, but he's seeing David clearly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So before things like, hit the end because they're calling in um, the big guns essentially to deal with the cyber psycho that's been murdering everyone. Main basically tells David to go, to leave. To keep running because that's what he's good at because he's fast. And then like blows the place up with himself and as that's happening David triggers the sand devastan whether that was willingly or subconsciously at that point it's hard to say. And sees basically Main blowing up in slow motion. And, and as, manages to snag his arms. As Main is blowing up, he grabs them? I think so. Okay. 
Because like Maine hadn't taken them off at that point. Yeah. Not that he could. He didn't have anyone to do it. Right, right. For a minute there, I'm just like, wait, how did he get his arms? And then I'm like, oh, Maine. I'm assuming it's as he's blowing up. Mm. Like, they would have probably been loose enough to rip off. Yeah. But he manages to get back to Lucy in the escape car with those limbs. Something that, at one point, Maine had promised if he ever died, he would give him to David. Mm-hmm. Skip forward a year. David's now in charge. He's got those arms installed, although they don't look as swole as they were on Maine. Somehow? I mean, they were probably retroactively fitted to be a bit different, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, David's in charge. We're going into a new place, and the newbie dies. Because he gets too overly confident and starts running and triggers a trap. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, David's doing good. Uh, Builds up teams. Faraday decides to come back in. He's like, hmm, you're doing good. Heard a lot about you. Uh, Heard you're good like me, but you don't have to prove it. Uh, shit don't go well, let's put it that way, at least for Faraday. And Faraday switches sides, luring them into a trap using Kiwi as an associate to do so. I mean, like, Kiwi's turn surprised me, but I always... I'm not surprised because she kept saying it. I was more surprised with the how it was done. And I knew there was something up with Faraday. Mm-hmm. Oh, I figured Faraday was a sleaze ball that would turn at any moment if he yeah, thought it would. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah. But, but Kiwi, she surprised me a bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, during this time, Lucy has refused to come back to uh, the thing because apparently, again, unbeknownst to anyone but her, she keeps shredding anyone looking for David, keeping him protected. David, though, is showing the signs of cyber psychoism uh, at, at this point. And Rebecca, as we mentioned earlier, has been trying to hit on him since Lucy has been so distant. And she reveals she was part of a team of child net runners. Yeah, she she does reveal that to David, that uh, that Lucy was part of a set of child net runners that were going through the old net. Which I found interesting, that apparently some net runner shattered the thing, so that all of the info that would have been in there has been just, like, scattered across the, like, landscape of whatever the net is mm-hmm. in this world. Which is weird. That's a weird way to portray it, but it's interesting. Yeah, so Lucy had to go into the old net and recover data, except it was very hazardous. And mm-hmm. deadly they programs ha- and viruses attacking and killing. <laughs> And malware! And spam! And pop-ups! Oh, so many pop-ups! Oh, yeah. Um, anyway. After literally working with, uh, the other child soldiers, they managed to kill most of them. Uh, Most of the people to escape, but a lot of them got gunned down until, from what Lucy says, she was the only one left. Who managed to get outside. From there, it sounds like she kind of drifted until Kiwi found her and brought her into this group uh, with Maine, anyway. Um, I'm trying to think what else what else goes in here that's important to mention. Besides Rebecca having, like, new cyber arms that she uses to dance on her fingers with. <laughs> and why are they <laughs> discolored from each other? Her pistols were before. It's kind of a theme that she's had with a lot of the other stuff. Oh, Wait, isn't her hair discolored? To, uh, like, no. Mismatch color. Nope. Okay. I think it's just her fashion statement. Yeah, she mm. she had her pistols. I think were like green and purple. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Or pink and purple, or something. They were two different colors. Mm. But yeah, it, it's just something that she seems to like. Wait, wait, green, purple, red, and blue. Is that an Ava reference? Why would red and blue be an Ava reference? Units zero and two? Two Uh, is red, zero was yellow. Oh, that's right. That's right, blue was the initial color of it, and yellow Mm -hmm. was the final. 
Okay. I mean, if they were green and purple, that could have been a Geneva reference. But I mean, green and purple is a color you would see a lot in this kind of setup because of the way they contrast and look together. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't specifically have to be, but it could be. But yeah, no, she had she had red and blue hands, and they look sweet dancing on her fingers. Anyway, Fa- Faraday comes in. Lucy has been captured. Here's what I thought. I thought that Kiwi would be bait. Hmm. I didn't think she'd be the one to actually like be sitting in the shadows doing the frying. Anyway, uh, Lucy has been captured. David is being brought into a trap to put on this new cyber skeleton implant that literally would drive you insane. <laughs> Has yeah, a this... shit ton of power, but like going cyber psycho is almost instantaneous for most people. So they said it was built for Adam Smasher, and because he's already insane, it wouldn't affect him? He's full cybernetic now. He's not, like, I don't know how much human is left in him. So he can't go cyber psycho? I would argue that's the case. He's hmm. not limited by, like, human mental capacity anymore. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Although that's the thing, right? If it was built for Adam Smasher, but when he sees like david using it he's like well it's just a baby's toy who cares <laughs> essentially hmm. but but adam we made this for you get that piece of shit out of my face essentially but but adam it costs us so much money no i will not wear that well, I mean, their their main idea was to mass produce the thing and it would be like a massive moneymaker. The reason, like, I think it's Militech wants it is because they're like, we got to get ahead of them. We got to know what they're doing. So that way we can, you know, beat around the bush and make more money than them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's basically two different monopolies trying to outplay each other by stealing corporate secrets. I think I read something about like a fourth corporate global war. I don't know about that. Could be. Wouldn't shock me. Sounds like something that'd be in this kind of setting. But yeah, we have a fight between David, who is borderline... Well, after... We kind of skipped ahead here. So, they're going after the the cyber skeleton, which they don't know what it is yet, right? Mm -hmm. They eventually, after finding out that there's literally no one driving and it's automated, uh get the thing fucking stopped and manage to like get into it. However, Militech has shown up with like a goddamn army for this shit out in the middle of nowhere, Kansas. I'm sure there's some cyber courage, the cowardly dog somewhere out there screaming. (laughs) Um, And basically Faraday uses Lucy to call David and tell him to get in the suit. He essentially like, hacks into her and uses her voice over the the comm link or the phone or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And David, being the dumb shit that he is and not questioning it after being in love with this woman, is like, fuck it, I gotta do it or we're all dead. What I didn't think would happen is that it would tear off both his arms and lower body. Yeah. Because all he's left with is like the upper torso and his head. That I didn't think was what was going to happen. Probably because he had cyber legs at that point. I know he had implants down in, like, the ankles and below. I didn't think it was all the way up his thighs. I'm trying to think of the one scene where he was naked with Lucy, like, watching the television Mm -hmm. or something. And I'm just trying to remember if his thighs were metal. It's hard to say because they're the same color as his skin. I mean, there were lines going up it, but I don't know how much of that is cyberware and how much of that is still, like, just the way it gets grafted onto the body. Yeah. He he jumps into it. Also, it's loaded up with all the shit he got from Doc earlier, which is, like, the last bit of, like, nine times the strength sedatives or whatever to bring him back to reality Mm -hmm. from cyber psychosis. And he Uh, only has, like... 
ten vials or something. It looks like a fucking belt across his back twice. It's way more than ten. It's like yeah. thirty or something. Maybe he like somehow made it into like smaller vials or I don't Maybe? know. I don't I, look, I don't know. All I'm saying is that, that medicine that Doc gave him was in three bags. I don't think there was that amount in three bags unless he had to like put the shit into the vials himself. Yeah. Because those three bags are not holding like ten vials apiece for how big those vials are. Because mm-hmm. each one of those is almost the thickness of a wrist, it looked like. He's in there. It's got gravity powers. It's going crazy. So here, here's what I didn't understand, right? Yes. We got to the point where Kitty left and ran out on her bike, right? What was the weird rewind that we got? We suddenly were back with Kiwi in there telling them about the suit. I because I I, hmm. I wasn't a hundred percent on what that actually was. Because at first I'm like, are we seeing a version of events where he goes through with it? Because like he's slowly getting the suit installed, and Lucy manages to escape and call David and warn him not to do it. Yeah. It almost seems like at that point they're aborting the po- the idea of him getting in the suit. And then we suddenly rewind back to when Kiwi's telling them shit about it. I do not know. Yeah, so I, I was unclear on what the fuck that part was. It wasn't very clear. It's my one big nitpick about this is that that moment I didn't quite understand what was happening. Because I'm like, oh, are we seeing an alternate version of events where he actually does install the suit? Like, goes fully through with it? But no, that's not the case. Like, that is the timeline that we're on is the one where he's fully installed the suit. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, moving forward after this part that we don't understand, David kind of completely single-handedly destroys Militech's, like, battalion that's coming after them. Yes! While slowly dipping in and out of cyberpsychosis. And Theory Day is all like, ooh, this is perfect. This is a nice suit. Everything's going to plan. <laughs> evil laugh, evil corporate laugh. But yeah, he's getting picked up in a nice little flight unit, gonna be brought in. He's like, ah, oh, it'll go real well. He'll lose it anytime now, and then we'll have the suit back. Akasaga, uh, yeah, Akasaga? Yeah. Yeah. Hakusaka will just pick it up. Arasaka. Oh, That's what it was. Yes. Um, they'll pick it up. You know, once he's lost it and died. Turns out David's refusing to die. <laughs> he's got one goal, and that's to find Lucy. And he's got uh, Falco and um, Rebecca helping him out. Because he and Lucy were supposed to go to the moon together. Yup. He's taking her to the moon, which he technically does. Even if it's not with him. Mm-hmm. So they get a call from Kiwi who literally got shot because she's like, I'm not working for you anymore. I'm done. It's like, oh, well, convenient. Because I have orders to kill anyone who knows about the cyber skeleton. And that now includes you. Oh, no. You're not working with me anymore. Hmm. So Kiwi, as she's like getting hunted and then killed, transmits the... uh, the coordinates to a tracker that she's placed on Faraday's plane. So as they're running from Militech and then Arasaka, David and the others end up launching themselves up and David jumping out of the car and landing on top of it, uh, the, the air carrier thing, and goes into the building. And meanwhile, David's still kind of losing it because <laughs> I think at this point he runs out of medication mm-hmm. once he gets to the top of the tower. But doesn't... And- Lucy bring him out of it for like a few seconds? Once he rescues her, yes. She brings him back to like where he should be. He's still gliding that edge, but he's more in control than not. If Um, Lucy wouldn't have ran away, do you think he would be in more control of himself? Here's the thing. I personally think that if those two had been able to talk to each other, like full on, no secrets, I think they could have worked out what was going on. 
what that would mean after that who knows here's the thing right there, there was a series that we watched before where i'm like why don't they just talk there's no reason they can't just talk there's no legitimate reason for either of them to not tell the other right i forget which one it was specifically but i had that complaint in this one i completely understand why lucy wouldn't say a word she thinks she's protecting david by doing so the more info he has the more dangerous it could be and on top of that with the way he acts the more likely it is he's going to try and do something stupid. Was it Darling in the Pranks? It probably was. Huh. In this case, though, Lucy is being, at least in her mind, a protector. Yes. The more David knows, the more dangerous it could be for him. Because he tried to do something that will just get himself killed or in even more danger. Still, if they had both been open and honest, I do think they could have figured something out. Whether that means escaping Night City or whatnot, who knows? Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, David comes in, definitely kills off Faraday. Uh, I, no, I thought Adam Smasher killed him. Oh, did he? Did he get caught in the crossfire? Because I don't think Adam Smasher specifically went to kill Faraday. I think, like, Faraday got in the way, and then Adam Smasher, like, shoved him aside. Off the edge of a building or something. He might have. It, yeah, he might have been caught in a crossfire in that way, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I know he's like, I don't smash her, just take him out. He's like, the fuck are you? Why should I care? Yeah, he's like, who are you? Why should I listen to you? I don't even know you. Shit? Yeah, what should, why, the, why should I give a shit what you say? Yeah, and then I think he shoves Faraday to the side. No, Faraday's getting picked up by, like, the medical people at that point. Ah, Okay platinum card carrier david does something weird and does the world out but like while doing it he splits into three somehow i don't know he's gotten the multi-form technique from dragon ball now i don't know what's happening um multi no jutsu i don't clones i don't know what's happening it's cool but i yeah. don't know why there's three of him uh, unless he's just like running the sandy at such a level at this point that he's like may as well be three people in this slowed down time i don't know anyway he manages to grab lucy knock back a bunch of people uh like kill off a bunch of other people that are trying to get to them i don't know i don't remember if he does any no he uh i think he like break like uh, bl blows up the um the missile that uh adam smasher is launching at them and flies out the building while holding lucy and at that point that's when lucy brings him back from cyber psychosis um uh and adams according to wikipedia adam smasher crushes rebecca yeah literally right after you kind of get like the the conclusion of like look i realize i'm not going to be able to be you and have david essentially like she's she's kind of come to terms mm -hmm. with that and immediately after that gets fucking killed like I, I, she's like give us a fucking moment here yeah, fuck you yeah <laughs> and just yeah. crushed like her final lines if i remember correctly they are fuck you we're having a moment here yep <laughs> i hate it i hate it i hate it I'm glad she goes out in a way that is very her, but at the same time, it makes me sad because Rebecca's the best character. Yes. I'm glad she makes it all the way to the end, but I'm still sad she dies. Come on. Did it really have to be crushing? Yeah. Wouldn't it have been like a full on firefight mm -hmm. instead of just he's falling from the goddamn tower and crushing her? Hmm. Anyway, David essentially tells Faraday, or not Faraday, uh, Falco something, which we find out later. And basically what that means is Falco grabs Lucy, throws her in the car if she wasn't already in there, and just bolts on out while David's fighting and dealing with Adam Smasher. Which, uh... Does doesn't not go, go well. over well, yeah. 
we do find out that uh, Mr. Smasher here has his own uh, platinum, star platinum. And he's like, this is just child's play. You don't know how to do it like I can. And kind of just completely tears apart David even with this cyber skeleton thing. But David is happy to know he made his beloved happy. I don't know if I agree with that. He's happy to know he saved her. Mm. Is what it is. By sending her to the moon. He doesn't know that that's what she'll do. Anyway, the... Uh... I'm trying to think now. Where did, I... Where did we leave off? Uh, oh, right. Yeah, I don't think she's he's happy because she's going to be happy. I think it's because he's managed to save her. Mm. At the very least, two people get out of here alive. Who's the um, other? Falco. Ah, okay. Who you know, we don't know what he's done. I assume he's left Night City, but where the fuck he goes, I don't know. Yeah. Because uh, we don't see him after they leave. As they're leaving, Lucy keeps yelling at Falco to, like, turn back. We need to save him. He's like, I can't do that. David's last thing he asked me was to split this cash with you and get the fuck out of Night City. We turn back. His last wish is fucking done. Because mm-hmm. we will die. Lucy did try at one point to hack Adam Smasher. Did not work. Because do you want to point is, that out? He's a legendary cyborg. Who knows what the fuck is installed in him? Yeah. So yeah, our last moments of the series are finding out that Lucy does end up going to the moon for uh, 250,000 eddies, aka euro dollars. Yeah. Uh, and the last thing she sees is like the the planet above on the moon and a vision of David from when they were first seeing the uh, the VR setup of it. Back in like episode one, I think. Two, two. Two? two? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was... I enjoyed this. It's very good and it's very bittersweet at the end. Mm-hmm. Trigger usually does make good stuff. Oh yeah, I had no doubt it was going to look amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of floored by the fucking writing. Cause again, other than that one point where it's unclear, everything is written really fucking well. All the voice acting is really good, especially on like the English one. Like I, I was floored by watching the first episode. And I'm like, these are all really good voice actors. I'm going to stick with this. Who was it? Alex Cazares. That's the person that plays Rebecca. Yeah, I was looking at her and didn't really notice anything else. Uh, she plays some characters in The Loud House. A mm, bunch of little kid shows. Oh, she was in Boss Baby, apparently, in the, the sequel. It's, as a side character, I it's think. It's funny that she did a lot of G-rated stuff, and now this is hard R. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much fun she had. Lulu and the WarioWare games. I don't know, it, it's gotta be fun to cut Lulu. Oh, she did play some shit in Fallout 76. There might have been some more, like, heavier shit in that. Mm-hmm. Not quite R the way this is, but a little closer. Yeah, no, it's like... She does a good job. I really love Rebecca. Best girl, Rebecca. Easy. No question. Hmm. You can take that Lucy, you can throw her in the trash. Speaking of which, I saw that they had a Lucy Nendroid that just got uh, announced for a pre-order. Oh. I'm like, where's my Rebecca? I will, like, in fucking five seconds buy a Rebecca one. Like, (laughs) you picked the wrong character. (laughs) You picked the wrong character for this. Give me Rebecca. <laughs> you chose the wrong. Like I don't care that Lucy's supposed to be the main female character here. Rebecca's the best one. Yeah, you've yes. chosen. You've chosen poorly for this to be the first one. I need my Rebecca Nendo. I would buy that in a second. Well, um, we're going to stay on the cybernetic theme next time with mm-hmm. a show about giant robots. And maybe interplanetary stuff? 
You know, I'm not 100% sure. Yep, so we will probably have a guest on the next episode. And until then, we'll catch everybody later. See ya.